mobilize workers within the Halifax Regional Municipality. And um, I, have a, I sincerely hold the values um, in my heart of the labor movement internationally that we are an international movement and our allegiance first and foremost is to workers around the world as opposed to any heads of state. And I want to affor affirm three extremely important principles um, that I believe activists around the world should follow when it comes to uh, Venezuela or situations like it. And the first being the right to self-determination. Yes. Hmm. Venezuelans are the ones who have the right to determine their own future for their country and the social conditions that would lead to a more prosperous uh, nation for them. That is not for anyone else to decide. It is not for international corporations to decide. It is not for Canada to decide or the US or any of the Lima Group countries. The right to self-determination is key here. The second, of course, which follows on the right to self-determination is no war on Venezuela. There is no problem that can be solved with to uphold human rights and freedom and dignity that can be solved through the barrel of a gun. And if Canadian troops are join anyone else in Venice in Venezuela to uh, in, in heeding the call of Venezuelans, the Venezuelan ruling class, Fine. it is not going to have the effect that Justin Trudeau and other politicians say it will. Mm -hmm. It will only mean more oppression for the Venezuelan working class. The third principle that I want to um, that I want to outline that the labor movement needs to follow is a solidarity with working class and oppressed peoples everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if they're going to follow this principle, then they need to heed the call of hands off Venezuela. True solidarity with Venezuelans means not deposing their democratically elected government. It means not supporting the leader, the uh, would-be leaders of a coup d'etat. Mm. And, and it means that, um, and you know, the solidarity with working class and oppressed people means that you know, we, as, uh, as people here, need to be building relationships with, uh, with our counterparts around the world, with workers and oppressed people. And it means calling upon our own government to not intervene in a way that would make this entire situation worse for everybody. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. many, much solidarity to the people of Venezuela. I bring greetings on behalf of the membership of our affiliated unions at the Nova Scotia Federation of Labor and our 80,000 members, sisters, brothers, and comrades. The Venezuelan people should choose their own president, not Justin Trudeau, and not Donald Trump should make that choice. Yes, we definitely. We encourage our members, our members not to believe the lies and misinformation about the situation in Venezuela. The president of the opposition controlled National Assembly, Juan Guaido, appointed himself as president in charge. Mr. Prime Minister, Juan Guaido is not the president of Venezuela. Nicolas Mondarno was elected by the majority in a presidential election in not one, but two elections. Right. The political move by Grandino has no legal basis, absolutely none. We stand shoulder to shoulder with you. We stand in solidarity with you against this blatant attempt by anyone who supports the overturn of a democratically elected government. The people of Venezuela, Venezuela elected Nicolas Moderno as the president through an inter internationally observed election process. No other state or country or people can interfere in the democratic process. The people of Venezuela have the right to determine their economic and political future. Canada, along with the international community, must bring a focus of conciliation and intervention to bring about peace. 
We cannot be silent in the face of the latest U.S. aggression against the Venezuela people. Mr. Trump cannot be allowed to continue his escalated threats of military violence. Juan Guerrero is a, U is a U.S. puppet. He is not the representative of the Venezuelan people. Yeah, yeah. 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 totally. Sisters and brothers, we know <laughs> Venezuela would be a tremendous opportunity to gain more profits for Wall Street, so the interference by the outside government must stop. Let's also remember that tremendous gains have been made in Venezuela that fight racism, sexism, homophobia, and economic inequality. The gains is part of this global struggle waged by workers and the, and the oppressed against the wealthiest and most powerful capitalists on the planet. We support you in your fight and stand shoulder to shoulder with you. The people of Venezuela have the right to determine their political future, not the USA or Canada or anyone else. Yes. Solidarity, sisters and brothers and comrades, solidarity. Um, when, at the point at which uh, Gato uh, announced, you know, self-announced at a rally that uh, he was suddenly the president uh, of Venezuela, you know, Suzanne and I were in Cuba, and we've been traveling around, we were a few, a few weeks in Cuba, and folks, the folks who've been to Cuba know that there's a very special relationship that has uh, been in place for many years between the Cuban people and the Venezuelan people. And, and certainly folks who have been there in the last you know, eight years, you know, I've seen you know, massive uh, you know, uh, murals of, of Hugo Chavez and, and, and so forth. And, and certainly it, it has not escaped the Cuban people. Uh, and we were having conversations with folks in, in Trinidad and San Fuegos and, and, and later for a couple of weeks or a week and a half or so in Havana um, about the situation as, as these things were, were happening. It does not escape the Cuban this, this situation, I mean, it could not only lead to a civil war, of course, in Venezuela, but it could lead to economic devastation in, in other areas of the region, and certainly Cuba most acutely in many, many ways. Um, you know, with, the, with the, the fascist that was elected in Brazil and the political situation there and the end of trading partners um, between the Cuban uh, people and, and, and Brazil, you know, the, the, the uh, expulsion of, of physicians from Brazil and so forth, with, with the, the changing situation. So this, this impacts not just the Venezuelan people. Of course, it's important we stand with the Venezuelan people, but it impacts not just the Venezuelan people, but it has much broader impacts in the entire region. And I will say, you know, on January 27th, I flew, you know, from, you know, plus 35 degree temperature to minus 42 degree temperature. I landed in Ottawa, um, and I was there for a week, and I stay at, the, you know, when I'm in Ottawa, and I'm there often for meetings, you know, for several days or a week at a time. And when I was there, I, I stayed at uh, a hotel, which I always stay at. It's the end of, of uh, Dalhousie Street in, in the Bywood Market, folks know Ottawa. Um, there's a, this massive statue um, that, of, of Simon Boulevard, and the statue sits there. Um, it's, it's, it was delivered, it was a gift, in fact, from the people of Venezuela. It was, it was it's a beautiful bronze statue. Folks haven't seen it. If you happen to be in the Byward Market in Ottawa at some point, you know, the tail end of, of, the, 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 of Dalhousie Street and in the market of Bezier, this beautiful statue looks out, you know, looking down uh, Dalhousie. And uh, a beautiful bronze statue was made by a, a sculptor named Martin Toledo um, in Caracas, in Venezuela, in, in 19... Um, or rather 2008, not that long ago, just 11 years ago. And it was delivered um, in October 2008 by the government of Venezuela to gift the people of Canada. And there's two plaques on it that indicate that this is a gift from the government of Venezuela to the people of Canada. So, you know, I go from you know, Havana literally to, to Ottawa, you know, plus 35 degrees to minus 42. And I, I walk by this statue every day for a week. And then and I come home for a week and a bit and I'm back there all this week. This week and every day I'm walking by the statue. Again, again, and again, you know, early in the mornings, late at night, you know, every day, you know, two, three times, four times, sometimes five times a day, walking by the statue. It's not escaping me. The Venezuelan people have given us this gift, this beautiful gift of this beautiful bronze statue from, from uh, Martin Toledo, who, who um, in, from 2008. And our gift in return is to recognize a coup d'etat. Um, it, it just does not escape me. But um, on that note, I'm going to read the statement from the Canadian Labor Congress, um, which was issued on, uh, um, just as I had arrived back in Canada, on January 30th of uh, this year, not that long ago. Um, the Canadian Labour Congress, CLC, representing 3 million Canadian workers, calls on the Government of Canada to promote dialogue 
to foster peace, peaceful solutions to the Venezuelan crisis. Canada is among several countries, including the U.S. and Brazil, that endorsed Juan Guaido, the Venezuela opposition leader, and the president of the National Assembly, who declared himself interim president of Venezuela last week. This book was written January 3rd. Canada further announced Nicolas Madero as president and called last year's elections in Venezuela fraudulent and illegitimate. The Canadian Labour Congress is alarmed at the escalation of international interference in the democratic process of a sovereign nation, including the possibility of military intervention. The Canadian Labour Congress vehemently rejects militarized solutions to this crisis. The people of Latin America have not forgotten the brutal <coughs> history of military rule in the region. Venezuelans need to resolve their differences through constructive dialogue and democratic processes without resorting to <coughs> violence. And this is a quote from our national president, Brother Hassan Youssef, who is the president of the Canadian Labour Congress. Um, so again, he says, uh, Venezuelans need to resolve their differences through constructive dialogue and democratic processes without resorting to violence. The Congress goes on to say, international intervention is intensifying political divisions and inflaming tensions in this country. There are reports of violence and casualties, including death, during the protests and the demonstrations. The Canadian Labour Congress calls on the government of Canada to abstain from seeking regime change and intervening in the sovereign affairs of Venezuela. Canada's role on the world stage is better suited to promote stability through constructive dialogue with the international community. And finally, in closing, the statement goes on to read, the Canadian Labour Congress stands in solidarity with the Venezuelan people and supports the right to peaceful self-determination. And that the statement from the Congress, of course, as I mentioned, it was written on January 30th. It's uh, on, um, you know, folks don't have to write my notes on my, it's on the Canadian Labour Congress website, which is canadianlabour.ca. Big thanks to everyone for coming out and voicing your opposition to the ongoing attempted coup against uh, Venezuela. Mm -hmm. You know, the amount of disinformation that we are being fed in support of this attempted coup is staggering. And our corporate media is very much involved. We are told, for example, that Venezuela is a dictatorship. Nothing could be further from the truth. They have one of the best, one of the best electoral systems in the world. I was there in 2015 as an election observer. Jimmy Carter said the same thing in 2013. So that is a complete lie. We are told that Venezuela's, Venezuelans are starving. They're not starving. Yes, there are major economic problems, but these are due to the economic sanctions that are imposed on them by the United States and other, other countries. And, and the hypocrisy that's coming from our corporate media is, un, is, is astounding. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are humanitarian crises in the world, in various countries, in Gaza, in Yemen, in Haiti. Haiti. Mm -hmm. These are largely ignored, of course. <laughs> And finally, the biggest lie of all is the idea that the U.S. is concerned about democracy and the suffering of the Venezuelan people. Just look at the history of the United States in Latin America, all their attempts to overthrow governments around the world. And here's, I have a partial list here, and this comes from a book that I recommend to everyone by William Blum called uh, Killing Hope. And those, there's like hundreds. There's uh, Iran, 1953, Guatemala, 1954, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Ecuador, 1960, Congo, 1960, with the assassination of Patrice Lumumba, Dominican Republic, 1963, Brazil, 1962, Cuba, 1959 until the present, until the present time, because they've never stopped, Chile, Australia, Angola, 1975, Jamaica, 1976, Seychelles, 1979, goes on and on, Nicaragua, more recently Venezuela in 2002, Iraq was overthrown, Haiti, 2004, President Aristide, Honduras, 2009-2017, Libya, Syria, Ukraine, and Nicaragua last year, another attempted coup. So there you go, the United States standing for democracy around the world. Thanks again for coming out. Hands off Venezuela. Hi. Hi.
think people have to be very aware of is that um, uh, the humanitarian aid that you're seeing that keeps bro being broadcast to us over and over again, at least on CBC and a few others. I'm so disappointed in, and it, it's a publicly funded um, uh, news agency who is certainly not serving the public on this one when they have Adrian Arsehole <laughs> down there reporting. Uh, and she really has little credibility in terms of how she's reporting and what she's reporting. Yep. It's unfortunate. Uh, I recall when uh, Fidel died, uh, when his casket was going through town after town and all the citizenry were out on the streets to say goodbye. And uh, she reported that, yes, they're all being forced to stand there to, <laughs> to salute to Fidel. Well, that was untrue. Anybody who's been spent very much time in Cuba knows that just simply is not the case. It was an outright fabrication. So we have to start taking the media on, and I'm so glad that uh, Global could be here with us today. Uh, glad to see somebody's reporting this, because you don't hear of all of the actions that have been going on right across Canada since this whole insurrection began. And I think we have to understand that any problems, financial problems going on right now is because of the sanctions imposed also by Canada and certainly by the U.S. Uh, and their lackey nations that will come on with them. You have to also understand that other supporting nations are bringing aid and getting in and out of their seaport, no problem, and also bringing medicines and so forth. Uh, they announced yesterday, but we didn't see any of that on the news, as we haven't seen any of uh, uh, the side of, really, uh, Venezuelans. And so uh, I think we have to be vigilant, and if you can, Start writing those letters to the editor or writing into the various newscasts and tell them that we want news with honesty and integrity. Yeah. So, no war in Venezuela. No, no, no war, war in Venezuela. Okay, I'm going to put on a different hat and as a member of the Communist Party of Canada, I'm going to read a statement that's going to be, that's read in every city across Canada during this rally today. The Central Committee of the Communist Party of Canada condemns the ongoing coup attempt in Venezuela organized by the governments of the United States and Canada. The Communist Party of Canada extends its full solidarity to the people of Venezuela and their democratically elected government led by President Nicolas Maduro. The Canadian and U.S. government's recognition of opposition figure Juan Guaido as the self-declared president of Venezuela, along with Canadian and U.S. sanctions and escalating material support for opposition forces, are shocking violations of international law, national sovereignty, and both the United Nations and the OASs, the Organization of, Amer of American, American States, States, no less, yeah. <laughs> uh, charters. The situation remains critical and risks further escalation as Trump continues to threaten military intervention. Juan Guaido, who less, who less than one-fifth of Venezuelans had even heard of before January 23rd of this year, and who has participated in and supported violent Guarimba actions in recent years, which led to the deaths of hundreds, has no legitimacy whatsoever. Juan Guaido's self-declaration as president was driven by Washington and Ottawa directly as part of the latest plot at, uh, at regime latest plot at regime change in Venezuela. Both U.S. Vice President Mike Pence and Foreign Foreign Affairs Minister Freeland met with Guaido to plan their international support. The Liberal government's full complicity in carrying out these crimes is shameful. Yeah. Christian Freeland's leadership of the Lima Group attempts to put a humanitarian spin on what the United States is declaring openly as an attempt at U.S. control o over Venezuelan's oil. The Communist Party of Canada demands that Canada immediately withdraw from the Lima Group. The Lima Group, a meeting of countries outside of recognized international organizations of states, claim to care about democracy and peace in Venezuela. In fact, many of these countries are the worst abusers of human rights in the region. 
including the ultra-right Duque gov government in Colombia, responsible for the ongoing murders of labor and social movement leaders. leaders. The ultra-right Bols Bolsonaro uh, government, which came to power as part of, of a coup in Brazil, and Honduras, which held a blatantly stolen election in 2017. This group of right-wing countries is now openly calling for a military coup in Venezuela. The Communist Party Canada demands that the Canadian government immediately lift the sanctions targeting Venezuela and Venezuelans, which are attempting to create an economic blockade of the country by sowing fear of international investment in Venezuela's economy. These criminal sanctions, along with those of the United States, are reminiscent of the Nixon-Kissinger attempts to make Chile's economy scream in order to pave the way for the fascist coup of 1973. While socialism is blamed for Venezuela's economic problems, the country is faced with an economic war in the form of internal sabotage by, olig by oligarchy, by oligarch-controlled monopolies, sanctions from the U.S. and Canada, and now the theft of Venezuela's assets abroad by the minority of countries supporting the coup. The Communist Party of Canada demands an immediate end to the corporate media's outrageous lies and falsifications directed at Venezuela. They ignore the fact that Maduro was democratically elected in free and fair elections, observed by international observ ob observers, including Canadians. We appeal to people across Canada to remember past slanders that proved false against countries and leaders that and leaders that ended in U.S. invasions. Support support for proxy armies and regional and civil wars. The majority of what is being said in the Canadian corporate media now about Venezuela is demonstrably false. The latest attacks on Venezuela are part of the United States effort of rolling back the democratic forces and overthrowing governments that are char charting a sovereign path for Central and South America and the Caribbean. Since the rise of Chavismo to power in 1998, Venezuela has been a main pillar of the bulwark against U.S. imperialism. U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton, himself responsible for war crimes and the role he played in the illegal invasion of Iraq in 2003, has recently labeled Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela the Troika of Tyranny. The people of Nicaragua have been struggling against sanctions and U.S.-led regime change plots in the last two years. Cuba has been a notorious target of U.S. aggression since its revolution 60 years ago, when it became the first free territory in the Americas. The ongoing criminal blockade of Cuba, now combined with uh, with some in Canada, uh, Canada's government joining in on a bizarre ac ac accusations of sonic attacks on diplomats, <laughs> crickets, a dangerous crickets, and the U.S. continued effort to turn back the Cuban revolution. Communist Party of Canada extends full support and solidarity to people of Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela, and their governments, which are continuing to lead the broader regional struggle for sovereignty, independence, and the right to national self-determination. Many others across Canada are demanding the federal government end its role in organizing this coup d'etat in Venezuela. We appeal to labor and democratic movements to speak up, to be double solidarity efforts, uh, in, ca in order to win an independent foreign policy of peace and disarmament for Canada. Great. No coups. No, no, coups. Coups. no sanctions. No sanctions. No invasion. No invasion. Hands off Venezuela. Hands off Venezuela. Again, people, if you, if you haven't come a bit late, please understand that there are hundreds of, of organizations that are that are rallying today. In, in in hundreds of cities and with thousands of names committed to it and you and we're part of it.